What is this? That's a question I keep asking myself. Even though I've had a little bit of time with it, I still don't quite know how to use this lens. This is certainly an odd piece of gear on the surface, but this is the Canon RF 5.2 millimeter F2.8 dual fisheye lens. You may have seen something like an eight millimeter fisheye lens and it's distorted on the edges. It's certainly weird, but what do you do with two fisheye lenses? Well, with the advent of virtual reality in certain workflows, Canon came out with this lens for that purpose. This is dual fisheye, which will allow you to get 180 degrees, not only on the wide end, but also from top to bottom. This is gonna give your audience the most immersive view of what you're seeing. This is gonna be great for real estate walkthroughs, training videos, or maybe even a museum virtual tour. This is an RF lens, so it will fit on any RF mirrorless camera, but at the time of this recording, this lens is designed to work on the Canon EOS R5 and the R5C like we have here. Ideally, it works with 8K recordings, whether that's raw or non-raw flavors. So when the viewer is watching the content on their Oculus or on their computer and clicking and dragging around, it's gonna give them the highest quality experience. To see this in a real world use scenario, we're gonna leave the studio and talk to one of our customers who recently tried this out on a shoot. Hey everyone, Tyler with Bedford Camera and Video, and I'm with Petra Medical College, and I'm here with... Uh, Kristan Anderson. And what's your role here? My parents started a company called Petra Allied Health, maybe, uh, I think it's 30, 31 years ago or so, and um, it's a family-run business. Uh, we train a variety of different entry-level positions for uh, Allied Health, so that's like, you know, CNAs, medical assistants, phlebotomy technicians, this kind of thing. And uh, my brother and I uh, decided to take their courses and put them online. So uh, my background, as Tyler knows, is in video, because we went to we went video to school together. Yeah. yeah, we went to school together. So uh, I've been charged with uh, the responsibility to film these classes and then, uh, and then edit them for the online uh, portion of the programs. So I see we're using the Canon R5C and their new dual fisheye 5.2 millimeter awesome cool VR lens. Yeah. Now, why are you using this versus something like a traditional multicam setup? So, I mean, as you know, Tyler, the multicam setup is definitely what you and I are used to. It's definitely what I'm most comfortable with. And this has been a learning curve. But the advantage of this lens is that obviously is we can get VR. And for the skills labs, we really want the student to feel immersed. We want them to be like they're present in the room with an instructor, actually teaching them how to do the skill. Because when you're working with, with online training, the disadvantage of that is obviously you're not in person. So this setup gives us the ability to actually make it seem as though the student is present in a room with a, an instructor learning the skill hands-on, even though they're in the comfort of their home. Exactly, and, and we know education has changed a lot just in the past few years, and I think this technology coming out at this time, yeah. it, it's, it's, the perfect, it's the perfect storm. It's the perfect way for this to happen. Absolutely. How would this post-production workflow differ from the typical you know, multicam workflow? There is a little bit of work involved, and it's a little different than, than I've been used to as someone who's been doing video production for 10 years. The main thing that I've run into personally is you want to make sure you have the hardware on your computer that's going to be able to handle these file sizes, okay? You're dealing with 8K here. You're dealing with 4K. That's a big file, right? And if your videos are like, you know, 5, five 7, 10, 20 minutes like these have been, that can be a little bit of an issue. There's a few hoops you have to jump through. I'm working in Premiere, so there's a plug-in that needs to be applied to Premiere in order for, you, for it to even work at all. Mm -hmm. And then from that point, you want to make sure you have the ability to actually edit, you know. So, uh, like for me, I had, I had trouble even scrubbing through it because these files are so big. That was an obstacle for me. Um, I'm looking to upgrade my setup so that I can handle this a little bit better. As far as the process uh, beyond that, um, once you have the plugin installed and you get it in the timeline, what's nice about the Premiere version is that it actually, it, it does all of the setup for you. So you can literally just take the file and drag it right into the timeline. And then it's just setting your in and out points, doing your edit. 
Absolutely. It's, it's a whole new process that we're having to learn kind of on the fly. And so far, it seems like from what you've, you've rendered out, from what you've, you've finished so far, it looks pretty amazing. And I think it'll be a great experience for the, for the end user. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be really cool. I mean, just being able to, to be there in the room. I mean, this is a great product. It's ex kind of expensive, you know, but, sure. but it's definitely worth the money. I mean, to be able, if, you're, if you're wanting to do any sort of VR, this is definitely the way to go right now. For non-Adobe Premiere users, consider using the Canon EOS VR Utility app. There, you can trim your clips, apply lookup table, apply lens corrections, and render batches of clips for editing in another platform. To render clips longer than two minutes, a monthly or yearly fee is required. So I know this camera is capable of shooting 8K RAW. Of course, you can you know you can put it down from there. Uh, are you shooting in 8K RAW? Um, actually, no. <laughs> so we did a test shoot, and uh, we did the 8K RAW, and then uh, I pulled it in, and we were looking at it, and I couldn't even scrub. Like I would like put the the, the playhead at a certain uh, frame, and it would wait maybe five to ten seconds, and then it would show me that frame. It was, it was, and it was, I think the bit rate was also much higher as well. Yeah, and we took it down, and that actually was really helpful. So um, the file sizes, I did some transferring uh, last night, and I was worried, because after that test thing with the 8K, it, mm -hmm. it was like, just to do one less than, uh, I think it was 30 seconds um, of video, it took an hour and 20 minutes <laughs> mm -hmm. to just, to export that video. And so um, that's something to keep in mind. You know, if your viewers are working with older hardware or if they don't have the RAM or the, the processing power that they're gonna need, um, or the graphics card for that matter, um, uh, you know, that's something to keep in mind. It could, it could be a little bit, you know, uh, of a hassle there. Mm -hmm. but, um, but once we took it down to the 4K, I, I transferred the footage last night and it went much quicker. It was like, it was, it was much more manageable way easier to work with. So, I mean, there is some flexibility there, even if you're working with some older uh, hardware, computer mm -hmm. hardware. Another thing that I noticed about this uh, experience was that you, because of your working with this dual fisheye thing and your, your viewfinder is only so big, right? So you, you have these, uh, you know, two little images that are circular on your viewfinder. It's really hard to see what's in focus. When, that, when you're working with this. So I really would recommend an ex, ex, external monitor set up to maybe fit on the top of it so you can have a little bit of a bigger view, uh, use your focus assist, you know, use your magnif magnification, zoom in a little bit, make sure you're in focus. In our setup, we actually set uh, the, the aperture to be pretty wide so that we would have a pretty wide uh, depth of field to work with. Right, we don't want it to be shallow. We want it to be, you know, a pretty big range that would be in focus. And and honestly, for the first time in several years, I was worried. Like, you know, I hope this is in focus. You know, you know, just sort of like, you know, hoping yeah. that it's going to work. You know, which is something I haven't experienced that since like film school. You know, right. you know, but um, but anyway, so that that was something to think about uh, in this process as well. So now I'm also seeing that you have the tripod oriented in a, not the typical way. We actually have uh, the leg going back behind the camera, not like you would normally have uh, in the front. If you had like a heavier lens, you wanted to you know, distribute that weight. Why do you have the tripod in this orientation? So this is actually um, a kind of a workaround. And I honestly, um, I would, I wouldn't, when I was filming, I had to even raise this up a little bit and make this a little thinner. Um, because this lens is incredibly wide and, and you're seeing stuff on screen that you would not believe it, that is in. Like there, I can't tell you how many times this week I, I, uh, someone asked, is this in, is this in the shot? And, and I go, on the inside I'm going, of course it's not. And then I look at it and I'm like, actually yes, it is in the <laughs> shot. You know, so that's something to be mindful of. This is so wide, you really need to make sure your set is clear of anything that uh, you don't want to be visible. Um, but, but that problem also works in the downward direction. If, uh, if, if the student, in our case, the student that's, that's learning the skills in the VR, if they look down, they're going to notice, huh, I'm a tripod. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, there's my tripod legs. You know? <laughs> so I was really worried about this at first, and I, I tried to, to work through some, some solutions quickly. But at the end of the day, I just had to bite the bullet on that one and be like, well, there's not really much I can do about that because this is just that wide. Now, th there are some solutions that you could do. Like if you could extend this forward enough, 
Um, and that would be what I would want to do, um, is, is ha somehow rig this to where it, it is actually here, you know, because then you know, the cutoff line is a little bit farther forward. You maybe see a little bit less of the tripod legs. But that was just something I had to decide to not care about. And I'm also seeing that uh being that it's so wide, you couldn't have a boom operator. We're, we're having to use these, these lapel mics, which are great. Exactly. Uh, but it's it kind of works in your favor because yeah. it's pretty much just one instructor. Yeah. And, you know, and you're shooting so wide that it's just not practical to boom something over, you know. That's right, yeah. So normally uh, in, in my production uh, setups, I, I use a boom. I, I try to use a shotgun mic above the head out of the frame. Obviously, as you said, that is not available with this setup. If the if the student or if the viewer the, uh, with the headset on looks up, they're gonna see. Oh, okay, there's the microphone up there. It sort of breaks the uh, the illusion. So um, that's another workaround. Is uh, we had to use lapels. And that's the Canon RF 5.2 millimeter f 2.8 L series dual fisheye lens. If you want to make this part of your workflow, visit any of our physical locations or online at bedfords.com. My name is Tyler with Bedford Camera and Video, and we'll see you next time. For more information on the post-production workflow using this lens, visit the links in the description.